It's late January in Northern California, and John Miller's bees are on the move. Tonight we'll load about 456, maybe 480 beehives on this semi. It takes about 25 loads like this. This truck will be very near 80,000 pounds gross weight. They're good. Miller's operation is part of the largest annual bee migration in the world, and it's largely because of these. Whether you call them almonds or almonds, this is California's biggest export crop, exceeding two billion pounds annually. California produces almost all of the almonds grown in the United States. It's had a compound growth rate of over 9% for 20 years. And what's driving this incredible growth of almonds is its nutritional profile. It's a complete whole food, it's a, it's a wonderful package of nutrients, and it's very versatile. The successful almond grower needs to know a lot about bees. And Dan Cummings, who farms 9,000 acres of almonds and walnuts near Orland, California, is no exception. California has over 800,000 acres of almonds. It's kind of a staggering number to imagine. While there are native insects that derive nutrition that visit for pollen and for nectar, we need to be able to bring in these quantities of bees, the European honeybee, to effectively cross-pollinate each of these flowers. And so at two colonies to the acre, 800,000 acres, we require 1.6 million colonies, 60% of all the bees in the United States required in California for pollination of almonds. A third of our diet, over 90 different foods, are depending on these honeybees. They visit the almonds and then they go visit the cherries and then they make broccoli and they help develop onion seed all over the United States. The reason the European honeybees are so good at this job is that they're domesticated and we know where they live. So at night when it gets cold and the sun goes down, they come back to their house, and we can load them on trucks and we can move them to the next crop. So these bees are doing real good. This is all new wax right here, and that's an indicator that they're doing well. In addition to farming, Cummings also breeds queen bees, which he supplies to beekeepers around the world, including John Miller. Let me find the queen. She's usually in the safest, warmest part of the hive, which is usually the center three frames upstairs, and there she is. She is the mother of the colony, one per hive. Beekeeping is in Miller's DNA. His great-grandfather, N. E. Miller, is widely acknowledged as the founding father of migratory beekeeping in the U.S. A little more than 100 years ago, there were no highways, there were no interstate systems, but there were railroads. My great-grandfather went to Southern California one winter and saw the orange trees in bloom in February and March. I thought if I could get my hives from northern Utah in the winter to southern California for this early bloom for this honey source, he could make more honey. This is remarkable. This hadn't been done and it's the first large-scale migratory beekeeping since the Egyptians oared them down the Nile 3,000 years ago. And there's another pollen carrier. Ouch! For the beekeeper, this is truly a labor of love. See, it's a nice day to be out gathering pollen. Somewhere out within a mile of this spot, mustard plants have begun to bloom. Somewhere out here, early wild daffodils have begun to bloom. And somewhere out here, bees are finding this pollen and bringing it back to the hive. That's like a miracle. This is last year's honeycomb. It's easy to share Miller's lifelong fascination with these industrious insects. And that's really good. But in recent years, they have faced mysterious challenges inside and outside the hive. In part two of our story, the urgent quest to understand what's killing America's bees. Today's really a perfect day to experience almond pollination. It, it just doesn't get any better. There's not much of a breeze about 70 degrees. You can hear the buzz in the orchard of the bees and you can smell the nectar. It looks like something you'd see in a museum in a painting. Honeybees are an essential part of the pollination required to produce food in California. Even though it's a beautiful day and it seems all is well, this timeless picture of natural harmony is now in peril. America's honeybees are dying in record numbers. About 2005, the industry experienced a near collapse, and it was mysterious, and we didn't understand it. That was the beginning, and unfortunately, I hoped it was going to be a one or a two or a three year phenomenon, and it stretched from that time until the current time. We're still having those unexplained, very serious losses. 
Dr. Eric Musson of the University of California is one of the world's leading experts on honeybee health and the phenomenon known as colony collapse disorder. About 25 percent of the beekeepers of both California and the United States are suffering these significant losses of honeybee populations that we can't explain. Some of the significant reasons that we think these bees are having difficulty, one is malnutrition. Uh, the forage plants are out there like they used to be, so the bees need a mix of pollen and they're not really getting it, so they can't be at their most robust health. And then the second thing is we got that parasitic mite called Varroa that came in and we're having a terrible time trying to control that and it's hard on the bees and it transmits virus diseases to the bees as well as just parasitizing them. So now we have a disease problem as well. But when you put a chemical in there to try to knock the mite level down, there's no chemical that doesn't have its negative side effects on the honeybees. Pesticides have also come under scrutiny, leading to a temporary ban on some chemicals in Europe. But as Dr. Musson explains, it has proved impossible to identify a specific culprit. We've got phenomenon out there going on now that we don't understand where we're a mix of three different materials, uh, useful in pest control, but individually known to not be a problem to honeybees. When the mix is used, we're really having a problem with the honeybees afterwards. It's a beautiful day out here in the orchard. Christy Heinz is executive director of Project Apis M, a nonprofit organization devoted to funding research into honeybee health. Because of our specialty crop grant funding from CDFA, we do have funds available to uh, purchase seeds and do demonstration forage plots for honeybees to help us figure out which plants are best uh, to complement our crop plants in terms of providing diverse nutrition for honeybees. Many experts agree that forage restoration may turn out to be key in maintaining the health of migratory bee colonies. While researchers continue to look for answers, California's farmers remain optimistic that honeybees will continue their essential work for many generations to come. We're truly in a very fortunate industry being almond growers. And the honeybees is a concern, but we're getting better at managing our honeybees. But I'm confident that we'll have sufficient honeybees to continue to pollinate our almond crops.